This episode will be all about Facebook's Libra. What is Libra? Why does it have current issues with regulation? And what is my personal take on Facebook's Libra and the technology behind it? Have fun. Welcome to The Blockchain Lawyer, a podcast on technology and law. Dennis Hilleman is an accomplished lawyer with over 13 years of experience and a passion for creating a better future through blockchain technology, cryptocurrency, and other disruptive innovations. All statements expressed in this podcast are the opinions of the host and his guests only and are in no way legal or financial advice. And now, here is your host, Dennis. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the new episode of Blockchain Lawyer. And today in my 10th episode, isn't that like maybe like a little anniversary already? Well, in my 10th episode, anyhow, we will go into Facebook's Libra. Everyone is talking about Libra. Um, Libra is the topic. If you go to any convention or to even to smaller events on blockchain and cryptocurrencies, there's no way to avoid the topic of Libra. And I'll look into, with you into the technology and the whole governance of the Libra coin. And then after that, though, we'll go into my personal views on Libra. And um, I, perhaps they even differ from most of people who are listening to my podcast. I don't know. We'll see. And I'd like to hear back to you. What, you, what are your thoughts on Libra? Well, first of all... Um, Libra covers a lot of attention in the media, and most media are very afraid of me of Libra, I think. Some say it will become the largest cryptocurrency in the world, uh, even larger than Bitcoin, with all the partners joining Facebook. And others or others say we should maybe even embrace the technology. Um, for example, from my point of view, the UK media seems rather positive on Libra while the German and French media is very negative on, on Libra. But what, what is Libra at all, after all? First of all, um, it's not Facebook as such running the cryptocurrency Libra. It is a consortium and that is called the Libra Association. The original founding members of the consortium were MasterCard, PayPal, Visa, Stripe, eBay, Coinbase, Andreessen Horowitz and Uber and some others. So um, in the white paper that came out earlier this year, and that's so far the main point that we have to focus on this white paper and not the media coverage as such, it was named that Facebook will not control Libra, but rather the Libra Association, which, is, uh, which will be uh, situated in Switzerland. And it's a consortium of members. You can buy in into this consortium uh, and uh, run, help running this uh, Libra coin, and I think it's a little bit, in a way, like a federal, like a central bank, like a central bank running a currency. The Libra Association, uh, from my point, personal point of view, copies that system a little and um, makes a makes this association then run the Libra coin. Um, but that was the original consortium, and however, that has already changed. Um, the latest case to shake this coin is the departure of several major partners. Visa, eBay, Stripe and MasterCard recently announced that we will abandon the project and PayPal is already out uh, uh, for a while. So you see the, uh, the association that Mark Zuckerberg um, set up there is not running too well. Major partners are getting out of Libra. They say they will still want to look into the project in the future and see how it evolves. But at this point, they don't want to be part of the association. That is also because of the much negative uh, media coverage and, of course, the regulation on matters that we will talk about in a second. So let us, let's first, however, look at the technology of Libra. Libra is like other currencies. Uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, I know this already will uh, will probably get some bad comments from listeners because they say no, it's not at all like other cryptocurrency. But after all, for everyone who's not so deep into blockchain technology, let us first say Libra is a cryptocurrency. It's based on its own own Libra blockchain. 
To address a global audience, Libra blockchain is implemented through open source software. The real peculiarity of this blockchain is that it operates initially as a blockchain requiring approval and subsequently becomes a non-approval blockchain. So at the beginning, it's a permission-based blockchain and then it should become a non-permission-based blockchain. But I doubt that a little. I think it will stay a permission-based blockchain. And that's what I'm going to talk about in a minute. It has been designed to allow anyone to build on it and rely on billions of people in their financial affairs. Blockchains are either subject to approval or uh, approval or non-approval, depending on who can run a validator node. In a blockchain requiring an authorization, a license must be granted to operate a validator node. In a license-free blockchain, anyone can run a validator node and meets the technolo- technical requirements. The Libra network will be in future non, a non-approval blockchain, at least for coming from the white paper, to ensure that Libra is generally open and always operates in the best interest of its users. The MOVE is a new programming language for implementing custom transactions logic and so-called smart contracts in the Libra blockchain. As Libra is to be used by millions of people one day, Safety is a top priority of the design of MOVE. The design of MOVE leveraged intelligence from past security incidents with smart contracts. Of course, this new language makes it easier to write code that meets the author's intentions, re, um, reducing the risk of unintentional bugs and security incidents. In particular, MOVE is designed so that no assets can be, cl- can be cloned. The MOVE enables resource types that limit digital assets to the same properties as physical assets. A resource has only one owner. It can be used once and the creation of new resources is limited. Move also simplifies automatic evidence that transactions have specific characteristics, such as, for example, a payment only changes the account balance of a payer and the recipient. By prioritizing these properties, MOVE contributes to the security of the Libra blockchain. Because the development of the critical transaction code is more comfortable, MOVE can safely implement the governance policies of the Libra ecosystems, for example, the management of the Libra currency and the network of validator nodes. The MOVE accelerates the future development of the Libra blockchain protocol and all the financial innovations that are developed with it. Over time, it is expected to allow developers to create contracts themselves to support the development and validation of MOVE. To safety safely store transactions, data in the Libra blockchain is protected by hash treated data structures that are also used by other blockchains and that detect any change to existing data. Another technically, technical peculiarity of this new blockchain is that this blockchain, unlike earlier blockchains that are created to a as a collection of transaction action block is a single data structure that tracks the history of transaction and states over time. So if you hear that, and this is a summary of what is written in the white paper uh, by Libra. Libra is, a, is, if we want to keep it simple, a cryptocurrency as, as such, and the Libra blockchain will allow, like the Ethereum blockchain, the development of smart contracts and applications on it. So what Libra actually does, mainly from my point of view, is attack blockchain solutions on on Ethereum base and make a real competitor for Ethereum. Also for Bitcoin, we'll get into that, but mainly I think the attack is, uh, is, uh, is towards Ethereum. For Facebook, of course, and the other um, partners that are still in so far, it makes a lot of sense. You don't un- only have your own cryptocurrency, but you also have a blockchain which will, will allow others to use it to develop smart contracts and decentralized applications on it. So after all, so in this case, Libra is like a lot of other blockchain solutions from my point of view. And even though I think some blockchain evangelists will hate me for saying that, I think it's not unfair to say that Libra is very similar to blockchain solutions by other parties, be it NGOs or commercial parties, who want to create their own blockchain solutions to run their own cryptocurrency and to bring people to program smart contracts and decentralized applications on their blockchain. In this way, Facebook and their partners don't do anything else than others. 
And I think it's unfair to say that Dipra is an evil coin or something evil that is not that is very much um, that is very much against the blockchain technology idea. We'll talk about that. Um, what makes Libra, however, um, very particular is that the coin is a so-called stable coin. Um, the predicted strength of a stable coin Libra is, is due to Libra running on its property and scannable Libra blockchain backed by a reserve of assets. It gives the stable coins its, its intrinsic value and also uh, mitigates volatility fluctuations. Libra is therefore called a stable coin. These assets consist of a basket of bank deposit and short-term government securities, which are held in the Libra reserve for each Libra issued. What does that mean? If you listen to my other podcasts on Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know that the value of cryptocurrencies may be very volatile. We are looking at this in these days. Um, Bitcoin was worth $13,000 a couple of weeks ago. Now it's back down to $8,400. And we don't know where this will go. And whenever you're listening to this today is the, um, is the 13th of October. When you listen to this, um, uh, you may be listening to it at a certain point that Bitcoin is even much higher or much lower. So most cryptocurrencies are very volatile. The stable coins um, are different. They are backed by uh, real assets. Uh, for example, we can make it very easy, really easy. Uh, there is USDT DT as a um, as a uh, cryptocurrency, and that is backed by a dollar. So for every USDT, I f from my understanding at least, there is a dollar. And uh, Lipa, uh, Lipa says uh, we will buy um, bank assets. We will buy a, a, a basket of assets that will make sure that the Lipa coin stays stable. And this is the second. This is the main issue I think that um, the regulation has. Libra will not be volatile because it will be backed up by real assets. So what will Facebook do? It will buy government securities. It will buy um, fiat currencies like the U.S. dollar, the euro, or the yen. And by the, by having this basket of assets that back the Libra coin, it the Libra Association led by Facebook wants to make sure that the Libra value will stay the same. So it's not volatile. And if you send your your friend 20 Libras to buy something on Amazon, he can be sure that the Libra will be worth the same amount the next day. If you think of uh, the Libra Association's open, atten uh, open intention, they say they want to help the underbank people then um, that absolutely makes sense because uh, creating a cryptocurrency that is highly volatile will probably not help the underbank people so much as as a cryptocurrency that has this uh, that has this stable element like the stable coin libra however and here comes regulation much into play what does that mean let us assume every owner of a Facebook account, every one of you who has WhatsApp installed on his or her cell phone, and I know you guys have it, I have it too, everyone having Instagram, basically any, everyone having any Facebook application could have by the beginning of, two, uh, could have by uh, the middle of 2020, a wallet on their cell phone, on their smartphones, the Calibra wallet, in that the Libra coin is stored. The door is opened worldwide to billions of people to earn and to have cryptocurrency called Libra. The idea is that you then use this Libra coin wherever you go like a normal currency. If, for example, um, because the currency is so widely spread and because it's stable, and because Facebook even plans to have like automats um, at uh, the supermarket and that you can change your Libra into Euro or Dollar or back to uh, Euro or Dollar into Libra. The, the idea is that the whole Libra coin will run next to crypto uh, next to fiat currencies. And let's us let us all assume why not? 
If I go, for example, today to some stores, I, I like to pay with Apple Pay because I just put my cell phone down and it works totally fine. It will It's paid over my credit card. I don't need all the coins in my pocket. It's super fast and it's super easy. So why shouldn't be the same be done with Libra? If everyone in the world has Libra, or at least so many people running on Facebook applications, if everyone in Germany has Libra, if every and when every everyone has Libra, every store will start accepting Libra. If every store starts accepting Libra, all other big players like Amazon, like Spotify, like Uber, the idea is they, they start accepting Libra too. When you drive in a cab, you can pay with cash, you can pay with your credit card, or in the future, maybe you just pay with Libra. If every application that you have on your cell phone and that you do payments, for example, if you download a newspaper or a magazine, if they start accepting Libra, then Libra becomes the major player that the Libra Association wants it to become. And because it's if like for, from one moment to the other, if Libra is launched and if Facebook updates its all its social media apps, if you have the wallet in Facebook, in WhatsApp, in Instagram, if you have it in there and uh, probably Facebook will give you uh, a gift or there will be other things to earn Libra and Libra is spread. When Libra is run all over the world very fast, it could happen. And what do then the financial systems fear? If Libra is scaled up because so many people want Libra and accept Libra, we will need more Libras running around in the world. If we need more Libras, the Libra Association will have to buy more financial assets. We'll have to buy government securities, we'll have to buy fiat currencies, and we'll have to buy gold or any other valuable assets that back the Libra coin up. And what regulation, especially in Germany and in France, fear then is that Facebook becomes a mighty financial player because it buys government securities. And so they fear that uh, a huge currency evolves backed up by financial, by, uh, by real time assets that Facebook dominates then the financial world. And if it, if it creates an own cryptocurrency that is widely accepted all over the world, then it comes to the point that Facebook will be a much bigger player than central banks. And that the whole logic of our banking systems with central banks making sure there's no inflation, inflation or deflation and backing up, the, backing up the economy and making sure that there's just the amount of cash around that is needed uh, to not run into high inflation. But all these financial system that we build up as a democratic countries could be largely endangered. That are the fears that are put up to now say, like France and Germany and also the EU commissions, we need much harder regulation on cryptocurrencies. They don't talk about Libra as such. Of course, France openly says no to Libra, but Others say we need basically more uh, regulations on cryptocurrencies, especially on such stable coins. They put it up, of course, to regulate Libra. And you already know from the media that Libra and Facebook is also under attack by the US. I think that the Libra Association, especially Facebook, wanted to check with the white paper what is going to happen. They must have been aware that there will be a large consensus between banks and governments that they don't want Libra to run all over the world. And I think what they do currently is to check out what will happen and how can we evolve Libra so that will, it will be accepted and that it can actually start. If it starts in 2020 at this point with all the regulation on the horizon, I doubt it very much, but it will start at a later point. So. That's the case. And now my personal opinion on it. Is Libra a threat to our financial system and uh, should it therefore be regulated? I personally think that we need good regulations on cryptocurrencies and also on stable coins, but they should not only focus on Libra, but on everyone wanting to 
offer such a stablecoin. And the basic decision will be in this case, do we want virtual cryptocurrencies at all? Do we want stablecoins at all? Or don't we, do we still want to only have fiat currencies? And what I think personally, though, what will happen at the end of all this is that the barriers for stable coins will be at least in Europe so high that there won't be much stable coins around, but that the federal governments will put the euro on the blockchain. But at the end, we will not have the Libra so, so strongly in Europe but we will have a digital euro on the blockchain. There's a lot of theories on that. There's a lot of talk on that too. And uh, of course, some of my listeners will say that it's very unrealistic because it actually would change so much. We will talk about that in one ep uh, podcast episode in the future. But that's my personal opinion. Um, so probably Libra will start in other parts of the world, but may, might not be used to be used for European users. That's my personal opinion at this point. The second thing is, um, I think it's not fair to um, make such a huge deal out of it. Because what Facebook does is actually business. Cryptocurrencies are the future, blockchain technology are the future. Why should a, a company like Facebook not invest into this future as well? It's just logical and it makes sense. And I'm pretty sure that even the other big players like Amazon or Google are looking into the technology as well. And maybe just checking out what Facebook is doing now and then come up with their own solutions to avoid the regulational issues that I just talked about. I think it's business and it's fine for Facebook for doing that. And obviously it's not so easy as, it, as Facebook originally thought with the many partners leaving the whole um, concept. The buying of uh, governmental um, securities, of fiat currencies, of gold, and becoming a major financial player then, well, that's what a lot of fund structures do as well. A lot of, there's a lot of big companies out there, a lot of banking companies out there that also buy governmental securities in the, in the billions and billions of, for billions and billions of dollars. And they can also influence how our financial system works. So it's not only Facebook. There are other players out there who, who do the same. And it's it's a little weird to like think that uh, Facebook now is having evil plans there. It's just logical for them to evolve. From my point of view, um, Facebook, I wonder if Facebook actually wants to become a financial player. I don't think that's actually what they plan to do. From my point of view, what Facebook wants to do is they want to become, um, they want to check out that they have more advertisement, that they can check on what you do with your money when you are, when you see advertisement on Facebook. That's what they plan to do. For example, if you buy, if you, let's assume you see an advertisement on Facebook. And that advertisement leads you to another platform. Let's say Amazon. You click on the you click on the link on the ad. You're led to Amazon, and um, maybe you look at it at what you want to buy, at what you want to buy the product, and you say no, I don't buy it today. So what Facebook can track is that your ad led you to Amazon. So let's say the next day or the next week, you think of the product again, and then you open up your cell phone and. You, you Google it, uh, you Amazon, you put it on Amazon and you buy it then. And let's say, I'm not sure. I don't think Facebook can track that now. What have you done? You have bought it. You didn't buy it directly over the link provided by Facebook. Now you bought it one week later. I don't know if Amazon then tells uh, Facebook, hey, well, you, here the ad originally let the customer here. Uh, he bought it now one week later. So here's the payment for that. I don't know. But the thing is, if you paid with Libra then one week later, I'm pretty sure that Facebook will be able to link these, these evolvement, these ideas then. It will link you back to its original advertisement. I think what Facebook will be much more able to do than with Libra is to know what you actually do with your money. It will know if you use Libra, and I don't trust all the privacy talk and whatever, because it will be logical for Facebook 
to not only know your personal data concerning everything you put on on the social media app, be it like who you're married to, be it how old you are, where you live, what you do in your free time, to which restaurants you go, wherever you post things. Facebook already knows that if you put it on Facebook or on a Facebook app, driven app like Instagram. But then if Facebook also knows what do I buy with my money? Why, uh, for example, which magazines do I buy? Or um, what is my favorite food? For what movies do I pay? What move do I pay? If Facebook can all link all that too by the financial transaction it can see through Libra, then I think the advertisement will be put up on a much bigger and better level for Facebook. It will be it, the advertisement will be even better for Facebook. It will know what the hell you pay your money for. And just I think that's the greatest dream of any advertisement person out there to know exactly what does the customer do with her or his money. And I think that is where the idea of, of um, Libra comes the strongest for Facebook to have the targeting for us even so much better. And it's it's up to you. If you hate that idea, um, probably most will. Um, I think it's just a logical business step. I don't know if that's Facebook's plan, but I think that would be my logical business step if I was running Facebook. On the other hand, I know a lot of people discussed Facebook and the whole Libra idea because, well, I was asked at the OECD event, the OECD, OECD Global Blockchain Policy Forum that I attended in September in Paris. I was asked at some bo uh, point by Karen, hey Karen, I hope you listen to it, um, if, if actually this is all a blockchain solution to me, if that is blockchain. And I said no. I said, no, personally, for me, that's not a blockchain solution because I'm a believer in blockchain. And I think what makes a good blockchain solution is that it's neutral and transparent. And Facebook isn't neutral and transparent with Libra because it's not neutral at all, because it's a permission based blockchain at this point. And if you become to become a node, you need to pay, I think, 10 million bucks. So that's not a neutral a blockchain and I don't think it will be transparent because I very much wonder what with the data uh, concerning or use of Libra will happen I mean it would be stupid for Facebook to not use it to this, its advantage so from a pure point of view on blockchain technology and um, you know guys I love blockchain technology and I think the main strengths of it are its neutral utility its transparency and its immutable status from that point of view, um, I don't think that, block, uh, that Libra is actually the, a blockchain solution. It's just more a centralized solutions that uses blockchain elements. If I it's if I want to put it like that, from my it's my personal point of view. However, and that's what I want to give you on hand when talking about Facebook and Libra. Is it actually so bad? At least it's a cryptocurrency. We can agree on that, and it will. It could open the world of digital currencies to billions of people. And we're all struggling at this point to go find good adoption scenarios for blockchain and cryptocurrencies. After all, you can't pay uh, currently, at least not here in Hamburg, I think at Starbucks with Bitcoin or Ripple. But maybe you can pay someday with Libra. And I always like to save uh, this. I mean, back in the 90s, when I was a teenager, the Internet became popular. But it didn't become popular because of German companies. It didn't become popular because you had a cell phone with apps. It became popular because of one provider, and that was American Online AOL. I think everyone from my generation at least remembers how it was to use AOL to get into the Internet and hear you are online. So that was the key opener, at least in Germany, for me and for many of my friends and for many people I know to the Internet. And where's AOL today? It's gone. And how much do we do on the Internet? Millions of different things than we used to do before. But AOL was this key application, this key door opener to a whole new world. And honestly, Facebook's Libra could do the same. 
it could open up the world of cryptocurrencies to many people who are not yet into it and you don't see the benefits that cryptocurrencies could give. And I think if we want to discuss it, uh, Libra, in a neutral way, then we should look into this too. Technology is no good nor evil. Um, blockchain is nor good or evil and cryptocurrencies are neither good or evil. It's always the use case of it. Um, Libra says that it wants to help underbank people the Libra Association writes that in the news and their white paper, and I think perhaps that's right. But I think that the actual use case is the one that I talked before to know what you actually do with your money, not only knowing your personal data on so many other levels, but now also in the financial sector. And if you put that together, the use case of Libra could have an evil element. But if you, on the other hand, put the point down that Libra could open up the, the world of cryptocurrencies to billions of people in their daily life, then maybe, maybe we should not look at Libra in such a good way. Regulate it, but allow it. Live with it, but show people that there are other cryptocurrencies with much better solution too, and make people aware of the privacy issues that run with Libra and let the people decide if they want to use Libra. Let, let not regulators from banks or from governments now block it all the way, because it could still be become something good if the people decide, and if the people use it as a start into cryptocurrency world, and then maybe move away, or with their pressure on Facebook, evolve it in a different way. Regulate it, but don't block it. So I hope you enjoyed this episode on Facebook Libra on the stablecoin. And uh, I would like for you to turn in into the next episode again. And if you find the chance, either write me what topics you'd like for the future or um, at least rate my podcast on the platform that you are listening to. I'd like you to do that because it would help to attract other people who are interested in blockchain technology and maybe stop by these other all these other podcasts that are that have all the that are very good that give very deep insight but maybe a little too deep insight for pe and expecting people to know already everything about blockchain uh, as you know my mission is a little different okay until next time guys if you want to learn more about Dennis please visit his website theblockchain.lawyer or connect with him on LinkedIn or Twitter. Until next time, everyone.